Our senior markets correspondent Julie Hyman back with us now. So Julie, what's the bottom line here? Should the average worker be asking for a raise? Well, at the very least, we should have more information, perhaps, about what the average worker makes. Right now, uh, we used government data because the companies themselves do not release exactly how much their average worker makes. But the data that we crunch shows that the average gap in pay between a rank-and-file worker at an S&P 500 company and an S&P 500 CEO is 204 times. In other words, the CEO is making 204 times what the average worker is making. That's up 20% since 2009 and the gap has been widening over the decades. If you look at academic and trade union research going back to the 1950s the ratio was 20 to 1. By 1980 it was 42 to 1 and then you saw skyrocketing to 120 to 1 by 2000. Now again that 204 to 1 figure. If you look at there some individual examples here and there are sort of extenuating circumstances for these so let's go through them. First of all Ron Johnson uh, of JCPenney had the biggest gap in pay package to average worker when he received that package in November 2011. And the reason we have this illustration here is because the gap that we're talking about here nearly 1800 times the average department store worker is equivalent to leaning a loaf of bread up against the Empire State Building, give or take a slice or two. So that's sort of the magnitude we're talking about. The caveat here is that he was given this enormous pay package in order to lure him from Apple because they took him away from uh, Apple before his options were able to vest. So that's sort of the extenuating circumstance there. The second and third uh, biggest gaps that we've looked at are at Abercrombie & Fitch and at Simon Property Group. You see there the gap that we're talking about. And again, here we're looking at the average industry worker, not necessarily the specific worker at these companies. Here too, the caveat is the way that options and other parts of the pay package are recorded is that they're recorded in a single year, even if the options and stock awards Awards stretch over several years. So that can magnify what the gap does look like. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Nonetheless, it, it, you can still look at these uh, at this average gap as having widened. What's also interesting is that Dodd-Frank mandated that companies give this information on average worker pay. The SEC is supposed to write the rules to make that happen and they haven't yet amidst a lot of lobbying on the part of various companies who don't want that information revealed, Deirdre.